Well, good morning. And uh, I would like to start from one very simple question. How many trees there are in our earth? That seems a quite stupid question because we look at the land, we see the forest as a piece of land with something green on top. But how many trees are really in the world? Well, yes, scientists have counted so many trees we have. And we have 400 billion trees. This is thanks to remote sensing technologies. That's fantastic, because these are living organisms. It's like us. They're individuals that contribute to our lives. And we have a responsibility for these trees. We have about 61 trees per person to take care of. So it's a, a small family we have to look at, we have to nurture, we have to protect, we have also to use them for our lives. And of course, trees are also offering us many important functions biodiversity, you see this beautiful butterfly, and uh, many other things like woods, water, air quality, carbon sequestration, of course. But of course, they are also part of our human history. Um, you see, this is the CO2 concentration patterns in the world, and uh, measured by satellites. And you see the red blobs that are moving uh, during the time. I don't know if you can push the button to see the animation, but anyway, you see in the world, <laughs> Uh, that uh, there are many areas with the strong red that is not connected with the industrial or energy emissions, for example, in Africa, in the forest area, in Congo River Basin, or Indonesia. So these are also the effects of deforestation. So we, although we recognize the importance of trees in our world, we still have deforestation takes place, and this is creating uh, quite uh, additional burden to our climate system. Yes, next. Um, yes, okay, it looks technology is working now. Um, we know quite a lot as a scientist, and um, we, for example, we have been able to, let's say, to close the carbon budget, the global carbon budget. You see from these numbers, on the left side, the emissions, the emissions from fossil fuels, about 33 gigatons for carbon dioxide every year, and deforestation as well, contributing to about 9% of the total emissions. But on the right side, it's very interesting that uh, to see in atmosphere, only 44% of our emissions are uh, really entering. The rest, about 56%, is uh, taken up by two important natural systems. Forests, of course, 30%, and oceans, 26%. So forests are uh, playing a fundamental role today because we are emitting more carbon in the atmosphere, we are increasing carbon dioxide concentration, but it will be even worse without forests. You will have about a double of CO2 concentration without forests and oceans. So this is an important value for us. And the uh, next slide, you see that uh, we try also to evaluate this, uh, this, uh, this uh, important uh, uh, function of forest. Uh, this is, for example, looking at what is called social cost of carbon. What is it? I mean, imagine if you have a climate change occurring in the planet, and you have a lot of disasters, uh, impacts on ex economic sectors, and you know, some economists recently have started to understand how much this will be, this cost, the damages of climate change. And we call this a social cost of carbon. So per tons of carbon, how much this will cost for us in the future? And if you take the forest carbon sequestration functions, uh, you can estimate that uh, globally and per year, we have something in the order of 470 billion of dollars. It's roughly the same amount of the economic GDP of forest sector. So we double the value of forest just by the carbon sequestration functions. Mm. Of course, deforestation uh, is going to reduce this uh, uh, potentials of carbon, and uh, as been uh, said before, uh, we now have good track, uh, especially in uh, by, by scientists, and Brazil is an example of a really uh, very powerful way to detect deforestation trends. And we actually we have been quite lucky in the last 10 years or so that deforestation has been reduced, thanks to governments, thanks to you guys, thanks to NGOs, thanks to the social civil society, thanks to FAO agencies. Everybody has put a little, a little thing in, in this big challenge of reducing deforestation. However, the last two years, these are very recent numbers, things have been going a little bit up. So 
the situation is not safe. So we are not safe, the forest. We have not really reached what we want to reach to stabilize uh, carbon emission due to deforestation. So there is a little, some more work to do in that. And this is why, of course, we have to believe in what has been created in the last <laughs> almost 20 years. The Red Plus has important mechanisms. Everybody of us, I see here many people, good friends, have been working hard to have this instrument in place. So we have to really reinforce that, we have to believe in that, but we have to also implement in real practices. So that's one thing. But the other thing that also scary a little bit us is how much stable will the carbon in the forest in the future? How much this function will be protected for, for a century or so? That is the time we need really to save our humankind. And climate change is occurring everywhere. 2015 was the warmest year since 1880. So it's really every, every year, basically, from since 2000 is becoming a world record for, for global warming. And you see, this global warming is spreading all over the world, of course, mostly in some areas like in the boreals or the tropics, has an important impact on our forest lives. Next. And what we are scary then, we are societies, we are discovering this new emergent problem. And I want to really push on that because it's an emerging problem of mortalities that we see in individual trees everywhere now in the world. It's like a kind of general virus that spread all over the world that is related to climate change. So there are strong belief that there are drought, heat-induced stresses, and still is very unknown in terms of the mechanism, the processes, the biological mechanisms involved. So it's something that is going on. There are many places you see in the world where these are areas where there's been detected mortalities, unusual mortalities. So you have also to, to look at that. So ad adaptation to climate change is also another important keyword for our field, not only mitigation, not only the function that the forests are serving in reducing global warming, but also have protect forests from global warming itself. Thanks. Thank you very much indeed. Excellent. Can I just ask you one question, Professor Valentini? Um, I'm just curious, is tree mortality now, um, I mean, compared to deforestation, how big is that a problem mm. in terms of reducing tree cover? Well, this is not uh, uh, yet exactly quantified because this is uh, really recent trends, uh, recent numbers. Right. But uh, there are many areas, for example, that 20%, 30% of uh, forest has been uh, hit by, by mortality. That's a lot. Okay. Yeah. Professor Valentini, thank you very much.